Animal Crossing on the GameCube is one of the most nostalgic and wholesome video games that Nintendo has ever created. As a kid, I remember spending hours just goofing around, talking with all the different villagers, and trying to find the best items to decorate my house with. Although these are cool, nothing tops my favorite thing to do when I was younger, which was try to catch all of the bugs, fish, and fossils to fill up the museum. So today, I'm going to dive into the world of Animal Crossing on the GameCube, and we're going to see if it's as incredible as my 8-year-old self would like to think. Nintendo. Never gets old. Well anyway, it started out pretty normal. Rover came up to intrude on every part of my life, and then proceeded to mock my name after asking for it. I get it, it's a little bland being only two letters, but I didn't think it was that bad. I set my town name to Hillside, and said goodbye to Porter the Monkey as we waited for our lord and said I mean Tom Nook, our local businessman, to help show us to our new comfy and cozy house that we can live in. Even though it's my first day on Hillside, I already have a place to live and I have a job. So let's go start our new service as a delivery boy at Nook's Cranny. So it's our first day on the job. I was a little excited for the title of delivery boy. I had all the mentality of working for Planetary Express, uh, but I suppose Nook's Cranny could be a close second. The tasks are relatively easy. I planted some flowers, made a few deliveries, and, and look, look what I stumbled upon. So Cookie and Midge were in an argument. Apparently Cookie said something that hurt Midge's feelings, and Midge responded in a bad way. Aw Midge, look buddy, it's, it's okay, I am fairly certain that Cookie didn't mean it. She totally meant to say that by the way. After completing the one small favor quest, I finally was free of my debts from Tom Nook's shop, but I still had a remaining balance of about 17,400 bells. Throughout my deliveries, I did try to gather as many cherries as I could to store for later. I'm certain these will come in handy so I can plant more cherry trees near my house and have some small income as the days go by. Now that I've bought my first tool, I'm finally able to get to work on the museum. The first tool purchased was a shovel, which is great, except I can't have the fossils appraised until the far away museum sends the first letter of recommendation for me to correspond to. I decided before I really dove into trying to find every fossil in Money Rock that I would explore the island a little bit just to get a feel for the layout and then also along the way pick up some shells and different clothing items from the police station that I could neither sell or maybe get out of these god awful clothes. I went digging around trying to gather a decent amount of fossils on my first day and of course I checked every single rock to try to get the notorious money rock and thank goodness I was able to find it quickly. These extra bells are, are really going to come in handy uh, to help sustain my crippling caffeine addiction. I mean art. Um, art. Yes, art. Maybe I uh, should not have disclosed that information. On the morning of day two, we finally got the letter in from Faraway Museum so that we can now respond to this and mail off some of our fossils that we found. Thankfully, I found about five on day one, so hopefully in the next few days we'll be getting a pretty good haul to see what we can donate. When I went to visit Nook's shop for the day, I was one happy camper. Not only did I find this really cool jungle camo outfit, but I also saw this neat cabin flooring and a bug net. Most of the main bugs won't start making its way into the game until later on in the year, but there's still a few things that we can catch this winter. While exploring the island for different fossils to find, I ended up running into Gulliver, who is a fan favorite and a classic of the Animal Crossing world. He told me a fun story about fighting a squid before getting thrown overboard and that I saved his life by talking to him on the beach. 
All I can say is I would definitely not want to go toe to toe with Gulliver, especially if he's able to defend his whole crew against a giant squid. What a hero. The rest of the day was pretty simple and boring. I just spent the time trying to find more fossils and the glorious money rock. The morning of day three was such a happy feeling. We got our first ever fossils in to donate with three in total. We got the amber, the T-Rex tail, and the stego skull. But nothing beat the dopamine feeling quite like seeing a fishing pole sitting in Nook's cranny. Oh yeah, the museum ain't about to know what hit it. So I bet you can almost guess what I did next. The second I started using this rod, it was like my 8 year old self was trying to smile through my memories. I didn't realize how much fun and relaxing this game could truly be. I was having the time of my life, until some fancy giraffe told me to clean her car. There I was, minding my business, when this giraffe named Gracie said she'd give me some clothes if I washed her car. So I did, and was given a fancy purple outfit. The car washing might not have been very exciting or fun, but I do like the new outfit, so it's not all that bad. And on the bright side, since I anticipated spending the entire day fishing, I might as well look good while doing it. There was one last thing I wanted to do before having my fishing day come to an end, and that's to sell a few things and finally pay off the first portion of my home. So I went on a little stroll, collecting more shells, caught a few more fish, and on the way to Tom Nook's to sell everything, I ran into a new villager, Tangy. After selling everything at Nook's Cranny, I ended up with just over 19,000 bells. And finally, I made my way to paying off the first portion of my home. So not only when we wake up will we find a slightly larger home, but we hopefully too will have some more fossils in the mail that we can use to donate to the museum. And would you look at all that extra space? I think it's about time we do some spring cleaning. It was such a perfect spring morning. The birds were chirping, the rivers were flowing, there were beautiful butterflies flying across the fields, and I even saw Tangy. Tangy, it is so good to see. What? What did you just say? You will not ruin my spring day. Well, after completely deforesting Tangy's entire lot, eh, she's probably mad I didn't pronounce her name right, to be honest. I figured, you know, let's take a nice stroll through the community. So I talked with some villagers, checked out on my cool donations at the museum, and then I decided to check out some cool shops here at the local scenery. The Able Sisters are probably one of the most nostalgic characters in all of Animal Crossing, and a cool concept that you can do here is customize your own clothes. And although I'm not an artist, I figured, you know what, let's take a shot at it and see if I can come up with a neat design. Yeah, 350 bells is such a steal. I will take this offer and let's go explore the island and see how everyone likes our outfits. On my evening time adventure showing off my newly built design, I came across this sly looking fox. 
He seemed to be pretty wonderful and wholesome, so I figured, you know what, let's take a look at his market, which is like totally legitimate and super double real, probably. Although I did question him a lot on where these items came from, he was pretty adamant on not sharing his secrets. Which is totally okay, because I did get away with two pretty cool items, the antique wardrobe and the dresser. I think both will look pretty great inside of my house. And while I was moving around my furniture, I started to realize it's getting really warm outside. On this warm summer morning, I left my house to get my day started. In the mail, we did have a few more fossils, but nothing that we could donate. I wanted to feel the summer breeze, so I decided to take a stroll down to Nook's, not only to see what he had in stock, but to get some bells for these fossils that I couldn't sell. After purchasing half of the store on a spending spree that I definitely could not afford, I decided to make my way around town and try to see if I can enjoy some more of this summer breeze. I picked up some grass, talked to some villagers, and just got a general feel for the day. Everyone was in good spirits, so it made for a nice summer evening. I could tell the sun was starting to go down, and I was getting really excited for this big surprise that the villagers were going to throw. The town threw a celebration for our train station and it was incredible. All the villagers were having such a great time and Red was selling balloons, the fireworks were fantastic, and it was so nice to see everyone get together to have such a good evening. So to end the night, I let my balloon lift up to the stars as we all watched the fireworks together as a village. Following the celebration, I was feeling great. That next morning, I had even more fossils in the mail and was ecstatic. To keep the good feeling going, I decided to fish around town, catch some bugs, and donate to the museum to complete my first ever dino display. While strolling through the town, I came across Tangi's anchor. And wow, did she really let this place go. Tangi, Tangi, I don't know. Either way, I'm sure whatever happened to your home, you should probably clean that up. I spent the rest of my summer just catching various bugs for the museum and then went to admire all of the hard work that we've put in so far. Although this day has been really fun, I really needed to make my way back home because it was starting to get a little chilly outside. There's never a better time in Animal Crossing than during the fall season. The brown trees and leaves are just so adorably made and since it's my favorite season in the real world, it made most sense of me to want to end this journey during the fall. While I go through my last run through of this town, I really wanted to go out with a bang. So I designed probably the most ugly, I mean, our coolest and most original costume ever, the jack-o'-lantern. After getting a feel for my newly designed costume, I strolled around town taking in all the fall colors to get ready for tonight's event. And I even made sure to stock up on extra candy from Tom Nooks. I mean, who doesn't want to be the only one giving out candy? Everyone was dressed up in their best Jack outfit and was enjoying the festivities. I personally believe I came in second place with the costume right behind Leopold. He is one handsome lion after all. All of the villagers seemed so excited to be out and about giving candy, including one special one, the mayor himself, who was giving out special items and gave me Katrina's tent, and he promised me that if I had this item, nobody would play a trick on me. Since I've already dedicated a decent amount of time in the winter, I didn't want to spend too much time during the snowy season. However, I couldn't help but just explore just a few more times and see all of the Christmas lights. 
I also wanted to talk to a couple of villagers just to say goodbye and hope them the best. I first set out on this journey to try to answer one question. Was Animal Crossing on the GameCube as good as I remember? Well, I'll just let you the viewers answer that one. There's way more to this game than my 8 year old self could ever realize. There's so many different characters with varying personalities, activities such as fishing, bug hunting, and fossil digging to fill the museum, but there's also monthly activities that I didn't even get to scratch the surface of. There's still so much more to this that I've yet to see, and who knows, maybe we'll visit Hillside again one day and pick up where I left off. All I can say is, Animal Crossing on the GameCube is absolutely as good as I remember.